Number 10. ATM Double Trouble In late 2020, two 18-year-old women in Edinburgh, Texas named Ashanti Slater and Isis Wallace found themselves either really wanting or desperately needing some money, and they decided to get it by robbing people at ATM machines. The young woman made off with $600 during their first robbery, when one of them approached a woman who was using an ATM at a Chase Bank around 9.30 at night. One of the perpetrators approached the victim wearing a black ski mask and carrying what looked like a gun. Fearing for the safety of her family members, who were at the bank with her, the victim handed over the money she'd just withdrawn. The bandit struck again a couple of days later, but their second set of victims were less cooperative. According to police, Wallace allegedly assaulted a woman through the window of her vehicle and stole her debit card after she withdrew $60 at a drive-up ATM. The victim's husband exited the vehicle to defend his wife, causing Wallace to run. He chased after her until she got into a waiting getaway car and sped off. The suspects were pulled over and arrested shortly after. They faced a slew of charges, including aggravated robbery, robbery, and grand theft auto. Number 9. Gas Bombing Gag in 2013, a British gang found themselves facing serious charges after they blasted 31 ATMs open and made off with roughly 800,000 pounds in cash. They used a technique that, until then, had only been seen in mainland Europe. It involved jimmying the machines and then lighting an explosive mixture to blast them fully open. In addition to all the cash they stole, the gang caused hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Seven of the gang members were caught at their designated hideout just hours after their latest mission. They received sentences totaling 114 years. But one of the suspects managed to evade law enforcement, and as of 2015, he was still at large. The fugitive, Adam Murphy, managed to avoid capture for seven years. But law enforcement finally caught up with him in 2019. He finally faced justice last year and received a 17-year prison sentence. Number 8. ATM frustration leads to road rage. When 19-year-old Jonathan Chacon couldn't get his car to work one evening in 2005 at an ATM in Los Angeles, he turned his frustrations to the customer in line behind him, Claudia Torres, and began yelling at her. She turned to leave and got into her family's SUV, but Chacon wasn't done harassing her. He got into his car and began chasing the vehicle, which was being driven by Claudia's husband, 24-year-old Javier Adam, their two-year-old daughter was in the back seat. Chacon rammed his car into the SUV and caused it to crash into a light pole, which then fell on top of it. Firefighters worked for 45 minutes using the jaws of life to get the victims out of the vehicle. Adam was rushed to the hospital where doctors worked diligently to try to save his life, but they were unfortunately unable to, and the victim died from internal and head injuries. Claudia and the couple's little girl were injured but survived. The suspect, who had recently been arrested several times on drug-related charges and was cited 10 times for traffic violations in the three years leading up to the deadly ordeal, fled the scene on foot. But police were quick to apprehend him. Chacon pleaded guilty to vehicular manslaughter and apologized for his foolish and fatal actions in court before receiving a 21-year prison sentence. Number 7. Internet Age ATM Heist in 2013, a group of highly sophisticated hackers and thieves in more than 24 countries worked together to collectively steal $45 million in a matter of hours. The closely coordinated operation involved manipulating financial information online and then dispatching street-level criminals to withdraw cash from thousands of ATMs. Over $2.4 million was stolen from around 3,000 machines throughout New York City over a 10-hour period. This is also where the first crew of participants was caught. Eight men from the Big Apple were federally charged for their role in the high-tech scheme. They were captured with the help of surveillance footage, which revealed the sheer volume of ATMs that were hit throughout the crime spree. The incident was jarring for authorities. Speaking with New York Times journalist Mark Santora, Brooklyn-based U.S. attorney Loretta Lynch pointed out how the widespread theft underscored the value of financial institutions and corporations throughout the world. In short, the most harmful damage was done by extremely intelligent criminals from the comfort of their homes and the anonymity that comes with working from behind a computer screen. And, of course, there were plenty of people who were eager to carry out the dirty work involved, as there was certainly something in it for them. The first step for the hackers was to raise the withdrawal limits on prepaid debit cards by breaking into the system used by the company that processes the transactions. They then tasked the street-level thieves with using the information to withdraw money, 
which translated copious amounts of money stolen from the company rather than individuals. By stealing from personal accounts, the criminals would have probably drawn the attention of authorities much sooner than they did. The hackers monitored the transactions that were physically being carried out to ensure that their hired help didn't take a bigger cut than they were supposed to. Details about the wanted spree have proven to be scarce, but it's unclear whether the masterminds of the operation were ever caught, although several low-ranking suspects have been charged over the years. Number 6. Confined Contractor A repairman from Corpus Christi, Texas was changing the lock on a room that houses a collection of ATMs at a Bank of America in 2017 when he somehow locked himself inside. Normally, it would have been pretty easy for him to call for help, but he had left his phone in his truck, leaving him with no choice but to write notes and slip them through the machine's receipt slot. In one note, the man wrote, Please help. I'm stuck in here, and I don't have my phone. Please call my boss. He included his phone number with the plea. Some customers used the ATM, but did not seem to take the note seriously. Finally, someone was concerned enough to flag down an officer, according to police, who spoke with CNN. In fact, even the responding officers initially thought the note was a joke, until they heard what they described as a little voice coming from inside the machine. They broke the door down and freed the repairman, who had been trapped for three hours. Incidents like this are rare, but not unheard of. According to a Corpus Christi Police Department spokesperson, who said that they can't say it's never happened, but 95% of the time, the person stuck inside has their phone on them. The repairman said that when he entered the room housing the ATMs, the door shut behind him and locked automatically. He was pretty mortified by the whole ordeal and said that he simply wanted the situation to go away. Number 5. Rich from a Glitch An Australian bartender named Dan Saunders thought he had hit it big in 2011 when he discovered an ATM glitch that enabled him to spend $1.6 million that didn't belong to him over a five-month period. After a night of partying with his friends, the then 29-year-old used an ATM to transfer money between his savings account and a credit card. To his surprise, the machine allowed him to transfer more money than he actually had, without penalty to his account. Saunders realized that he was able to do this during certain times when the ATM system went offline and disconnected from the bank, creating a delay between the withdrawal and the documentation of the transaction. Simply put, he was able to overdraw his accounts to the tune of large sums of money without the system detecting it. It was a wild five months for the bartender, who was suddenly able to afford to throw wild parties and splurge on luxury hotel rooms, upscale dinners, and other lavish indulgences. He even got in touch with his philanthropic side by donating some of the stolen money to his friends for their college tuition. Ironically, it was when Saunders stopped making the financial transactions that his bank finally caught on. He recounted the ordeal in a Vice interview, explaining how it took 10 months after finding out for the bank to take legal action against him. To make things even weirder, the authorities and the judge had trouble wrapping their minds around exactly how the complex scheme worked. Consequently, he was let off pretty easily. Considering the level of theft involved, Saunders served one year in prison and was under post-release supervision for just 18 months thereafter. After paying his debt to society, he returned to work in the hospitality industry. Number four, the skeleton mask robber. Over a two-week period in early 2005, a robber wearing a skeleton mask and brandishing a handgun robbed numerous people at drive-up ATMs throughout Raleigh, North Carolina. His MO was to wait until a customer slid their card into the machine and entered their PIN number. He then rushed up to the victim, stuck the gun in their face, and demanded their money. When police came close to catching the culprit, he stopped committing the robberies. But law enforcement remained committed to bringing the thief to justice and it was only a matter of time before they did. The perpetrator eventually struck again, only this time, he robbed an actual bank rather than a customer at an ATM machine. He also reportedly tried to rob a CVS store. An investigation of the bank robbery led police to 25-year-old Davis James Talton, who they also connected to the ATM crimes. He pleaded guilty to seven counts of common law robbery and one count of attempted robbery, and was handed a nine to 15 year prison sentence. Number 3. An Abandoned ATM Police in San Antonio didn't have to search for long before finding an ATM that was recently stolen from one of the city's Northside Bank locations. They noticed that it was missing from a Chase Bank drive through after receiving a call about the incident around 4 o'clock in the morning. Someone had ripped the ATM right out of the wall. 
Officers simply followed a trail of drag marks on the ground, and it led them straight to the missing machine. The thieves who stole it had left it in the parking lot of a dollar store. There was a large chain around it that was also connected to an abandoned pickup truck that was used to drag it to the site from the bank. Witnesses reportedly saw the group leaving the scene in a different vehicle, which they provided law enforcement with a description. The vehicle was tracked down outside a nearby apartment complex. At the last update, its owner was being held as a person of interest. Detectives are still investigating the bizarre heist and working to determine who else was involved. Number 2. Tractor Driving Thief In one of the more bizarre crime stories to make headlines recently, a thief in Brentwood, California stole a tractor from a construction site and used it to remove an ATM from a Wells Fargo bank. Police were alerted to the incident during the early morning hours, courtesy of an alarm that the burglary set off, as well as witness reports. The suspect caused severe damage to the front of the building during the heist, but they failed to get any cash out of the ATM, which was found just 600 feet from the bank. Police found the tractor abandoned in a field. A law enforcement spokesperson said that it was extremely dangerous to steal such a large tractor. Thankfully, nobody seemed to have been hurt in the commission of the crime. The agency did not identify the suspect and urged anyone with information to come forward. The investigation is ongoing. And number one, brute force. In 2014, a burglar took an unconventional approach to robbing an ATM in Fremont, California. He rammed his van through the front window of a gas station, then proceeded to unbolt the machine from the floor and loaded it into the vehicle before driving off. The alarming heist happened in the early hours of the morning when the clerk was alone in the store. This isn't the first time a thief crashed their vehicle in the process of stealing or trying to steal an ATM. Late last year, a group of suspects slammed a stolen van into the entrance of a Baltimore CVS in an attempt to gain entry into the store. Things didn't go as planned, and they abandoned the operation, leaving the van at the scene. The vehicle was still running when officers arrived. A police spokesperson said that the ATM was damaged, but the thieves failed to extract any cash from it. A pair of robbers in Brooklyn had better luck when they rammed a car into an ATM during the early morning hours earlier this year. They made off with over $6,000 in cash after robbing the machine at a gas station in the Sheep Shed Bay neighborhood. One of the bandits dropped his cell phone and unknowingly left it at the scene, and the pair had the guts to return and ask workers if they had seen it. The NYPD released a photo of one of the men, who was captured on surveillance footage, but it appears as though the suspects remain at large. Thanks for watching. Would you rather hand over your recently withdrawn cash to a thief or spend $200 on the most disappointing steak dinner of your life? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.